Welcome, everybody. I uh, just want to welcome to the uh, kickoff event here for the uh, Zone 7 Zone meeting. Uh, I, as I said, I'm Ron Kuhn. I'm the I'm professor at Kettering University in Flint, Michigan. And by now, I'm also at Kettering University. Um, finally, associate Yeah. So um, here's what we'll be talking about today. So I wanted to uh, give you some uh, sort of an introduction and some updates about how we're communicating with folks. I want to tell you about the national, upcoming national council elections and uh, ask you to turn in chapter reports. Also, uh, we're trying to put together a new zone council, so I want to talk a little bit about that. And then I uh, want to give you some updates about some things going on at the national council level in terms of some programs and also 2022 Congress and then any other issues you might have. So. So this is our uh, this is our this is the map of the United States in terms of where the zones are. It's Society of Physics students. Uh, so you can see here we are Zone Seven, which is uh, Lower Peninsula of Michigan, Ohio, all of West Virginia, and the western part here of Pennsylvania. Um, there are eighteen zones in total, um, and uh, so you can see how they're kind of laid out here. Wow. I didn't even see the one for the national yeah, That's cool. cool. I did not. I did not there is yeah, yeah, a couple. There's one. Uh, Egypt, apparently, and some in China, India, wow. Africa, and Singapore. Um, so yeah, that's that's where that's where our extent is. So we're a big zone. Uh, we have 99 chapters on the books, so a lot. Um, so the mission statement here is for uh, to help students transform themselves into contributing members of the professional community, and that entails lots of different things: improving their communication, personal interaction skills, demonstrating leadership. Uh, establishing a personal network, that's why we have these meetings, <laughs> and uh, also being able to present work at professional meetings, so for example, presenting posters, presentations at meetings, and then also reaching out, in some cases, to the campus and local communities, doing outreach. Um, so we try to hit on all those things and the various different kinds of things, programs that are offered through the national uh, organization and also through local chapters. So, so great. So I just want to let you know that we are, we do try to communicate with everybody in the zone. Um, we do have a website. Did you know we have a website? No. Nope. Okay. <laughs> well, now you know. <laughs> yeah, so if you just, just do a Google search on. Uh, yes. So we've got so many, this is the whole gist of like this whole thing. <laughs> I'm just gonna sum it up for you in like two sentences. Um, we have so many things out there for you guys. No, I mean, so many things, but getting like to reach you guys, like I don't know if there's I have no So if you if you're on the list, you would have gotten an email from me from this morning telling you about this meeting here today. I sent like so, five emails. <laughs> so. All right, well, we so can like, check on that. But. So, but that's what I mean. It's, it's really tough to so we start to get some like, hey, like, there's scholarship you know, deadlines that are due, or we want an internship because applications are due for that and all that sort of stuff. Um, so we'll send you out these slides, and I'll make sure you get them so that you can you can, uh, you can just do a search on SPS Zone 7, look up on Google, and then I'll take you to the list there. And I don't know if we have a link to the Discord. I think we have links to the Discord on the website. I'll check on that. Oh, there's definitely a link to the YouTube channel from the website. Yeah, because I made us at Discord. I found out a way how to like, make the QR code. Yeah. I just put it on the board. I don't know. There's also a, a sub-channel on the SPS National Discord uh, server. There's a national one, yes, yes. So that's, I suggest you subscribe to that as well. You get like a copy of the PowerPoint. I will definitely send you a copy of the PowerPoint presentation here. So don't worry about writing it down. We just want to let you know that it's out there. So, um, so yeah, so if you're not getting our emails, uh, then let us know about that. We can get those, at least, we're supposed to go out to the officers and the advisors. Okay, so just as a reminder, so it's time of year for national council elections. Um, so you get one vote per chapter. So Youngstown State will have one vote. And um, there's th three positions that are open this year uh, for our election. So there's gonna be the Associate Zone Council position, which is a, a position that runs every year. Um, 
And then the zone counselor, which is the typically professional slash faculty type member, and that's every three years, and it's up this year for re-election. And then um, also the Sigma Pi Sigma president. So there's sort of two organizations, there's Society of Physics Students, and then there's Sigma Pi Sigma, which is the Physics Honor Society, and they both have separate presidents. So that's, um, that's uh, the situation there. So anyway, uh, if you're not on the mailing list, though, you won't get. <laughs> you know, are you on the mailing list? For the, are you a member of SPS? Any of you? Like an actual, like an actual member, member, paid member. I'm not a paid member. Okay, so you're not going to be on the list that way either. But um, <laughs> we will get you the information somehow, so you can go. Okay. <laughs> All right. So yeah, look for that. Um, those the nominations just closed for that. Um, Sean, are you getting the mail? I did get your email uh, a couple days ago about today's meeting, so I okay. went that mailing. But. Okay, well, okay, you, but you, you get the stuff about the national elections, yes? Usually. So I, I do get the stuff from the national office, yeah. Okay. I'm not sure our officers do, though, so that's a good question. Okay, all right. Um, yeah, if you send me their names again, I'll, I'll, I can check the list, I think. Okay. Thanks. Okay, um, also very important getting to this idea of making sure our lists are updated, chapter reports. So every year, uh, the national organization asks each chapter to file a chapter report. And there's really two main things that, that reasons for that. Number one, uh, we want to know what you're doing, because we'd like to know. Um, share that and share, so we know, and then we can share that with other people. But also so that we get up-to-date contact information. So that way, from year to year, when the officers change or if their advisors change, then we know, and we can make sure we update the list accordingly. So, um, if you haven't filed a chapter report in a while, that's maybe why things aren't quite right with the email. Um, so it's it's pretty simple. Uh, basically, the, they have it set up so it's just a Google form, and you fill out the Google form, and then if you want to attach more, which basically has like you know what's your chapter name, who are your officers for next this year and next year, um, some basic things about the chapter, and then if you want to update and put more information, there's actually a template that they suggest if you want to write up a more extensive report. And then that goes in, and then uh, you can actually get an award depending on what you do, you know, uh, from based on the other reports. So um, that's that's how the reports work. Anyway, those are due June fifteenth, so there's quite a bit of time still left to do that. And um, usually there's some sort of uh, award or prize for those folks who first few hundred chapters to get the uh, first hundred chapters to get it in. So you can actually get some money right, to do something. Um, so we, we've always done pretty well with our, our zone and I want to keep it that way. So the more, the more chapter reports we get in, uh, the better off we are. Uh, so let's try to keep, keep, get our, keep our numbers up. Yeah. So like you said, we have like nine, like nine chapters and that's on paper, but still on the up because only 23 or 24 people for chapters that submitted a report. So that's like 70 unaccounted for chapters that you have no clue what they're yeah. doing, who sure. they are, how to reach them. That's like my our biggest problem. That's my job, so to speak, as the association counselor, is to try to like bridge that gap between nationals and new. Yeah. 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 See, they don't know. Like, yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah, because they think we're kind of small. Right. I'm not saying like our new chapter, but like our chapter. Oh, our chapter is super small. We're like, so how many like, people? Are <laughs> it just might not be enough information floating around. Right. Sure. So we're working on it, but. I mean, that also stems back to. Well, we're not on the email. Right, exactly, exactly. Exactly. When I send an email, I don't get an email. Like, yeah, it's crazy. Okay. I don't know. I don't know. There's just such a big disconnect. So, yeah, I, I didn't know that, but now that I know that, I can fix that. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, anyway, chapter reports. Yes. Um, there are also other chapter awards that we just want to make you all aware of. So, for example, um, uh, there's a bunch of different awards. Um, uh, so there, first of all, there's, there's uh, the awards for individual chapters based on what you do during the year. So it's basically a notable, distinguished, and outstanding awards. So it's three different levels. Um, and it's really based on involvement in, in professional meetings, for example, like the ones going on right now, um, participation in SPS programs, um, outreach efforts that you do, things you might do uh, you know, within the school and outside the school. Um, even social events that you do, alumni engagement, all those things you can write up, put into your chapter report. And that's 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 what, what the awards are typically based on. Pictures and pictures, yeah, put in pictures, yeah. 
So one thing Somebody like for your Halloween event? Yep. Yeah, another thing that I, I guess, I'm not supposed to do is like a newsletter, but it, they're not getting it. So, you know. so anyway, the chapter report is a really good way to get those returns. We don't get those returns. Right. Um, it's, it's actually really good. Yeah. Um, so I there's another award too, which usually filed along the same time when you do, the, if you file a chapter report called the Blake Lilly Award, which uh, if you're doing it specifically for outreach, like to kids. Um, so if you have a project like that, you want to write a little report about it, um, you can put that in that word as well. Okay, so um, we're trying to, in another way to try to enhance communication, we'd like to really put together sort of a zone council so this would be kind of a, so there's a national council, right, from all the zones. Uh, so there's basically 36 people, two from each zone. But then we'd like to have one just for our zone because we have, you know, four states and a lot of chapters. So um, if you know anybody who might be interested, just it's going to be like a low time commitment thing. I'm thinking maybe meeting once or twice a semester, basically, um, and maybe a Zoom. And just that way we can get some feedback of what's going on around the zone and, um, help to perhaps uh, you know, get the word out about things. So uh, let me know if you're interested in that. Um, so some examples uh, would be if there are chapters around your area here that you know, maybe we can touch base on or like have in person meetings or in person events or you know, virtual events or anything like that, just kind of stay in touch. Um, because I know some chapters what they'll do is they'll work on projects together, like business projects. So when people, you know, had people from like other schools coming and coming together to do other events. I don't even know if there are other chapters. Oh, there's like none of I don't know. Where there's a lot in Ohio. We're responsible. Right. So that's sure. We sure. can talk about that. You know, and we can have that discussion. Yeah. So what I would like to do is have because we have our own meetings to do this. Um, but it'd be cool if we had more of a way to stay in touch and more of a way to, like I said, with that guy, to also form like a longer lasting relationship. You know, like I know you now, so. 10 years from now, you can be like, yeah, I'm doing some cool stuff in the front. And then you're going to be like, yeah, we're going to do It's networking. Networking is like, come down to, right? I mean, there's so many, really really, like, we're all really nerds. We're all like hiding in our own, you know, telescopes and stuff. Like, it'd be cool to branch out and meet other people who also like telescopes because there's a lot of them. I can promise. There's this guy in Alabama that I got to meet for the best year. He's wild about telescopes. I mean, he'll be on the phone for hours over telescopes. So people like that, and then you know, general. Okay. Uh, again, just uh, so if you do want to join the national organization, I do highly recommend it. It's only twenty-four dollars a year for year membership. Okay, and. Uh, Basically, you just go online and just do a search on SPS, join SPS, and it'll pretty much come up. Um, there's also some other options too, like if you want to get together with some friends, you can get a discount if you have more than five people sign up at once. Uh, and also, uh, it's, uh, you can get your department to, to, to pay for it. Then uh, they can, they'll actually pay for everybody, perhaps in your entire school. Um, so, um, and that even comes with some extra bonuses. So, uh, anyway, lots of ways to join, but. The the good the great thing about the joining is that you actually become become eligible for things like awards and scholarships. Like for example, we've had we have several students who got a thousand dollar or two thousand dollar scholarships from the Society of Physics students. Um, that's real money, right? For twenty four dollars, that's a, that's a good investment, yeah. right? <laughs> um, and and honestly, I mean, they keep telling us we can't. They have a hard time sometimes giving the money away. Like they, yeah. not enough people apply sometimes. So it's worthwhile. But that's not all. That's not all. Okay. So you get the physics, the physics observer magazine, some of what you see on the table there. Okay, that comes out like quarterly. Um, also, you get Physics Today every month, which is the professional uh, uh, magazine for physicists. Um, 
uh, you get two free memberships in AIP member societies. Okay, so each one of those is well over $100, like for someone like me, for a professional. Okay, and that includes American Physical Society. Um, they get, you get a bi weekly newsletter, they send out via email every, to keep up what's going on, seems across the, the, the country, and then a bunch of other things here. So, um, highly worth it, I think, <laughs> might be. If you have any questions, let me know. Um, all right, just briefly, uh, this is the National Council. This is a picture that we took uh, in the DC area um, just last fall. And um, so, so, I'm in the front row. Next to This is our, this is the Sigma Pi Sigma president, Jim Bogart. This is uh, Carol Slack, who's actually been the state university. He's the president of the Society of Physics Students National. And then that guy, the Brad Conrad is the executive. Love Brad so much. He's so positive, and he like kind of the guy that really wants to be the energy. I would say for hopefully. Um, and then there's some other staff members here, which is something that I contact the national office. Yes. So that's that's them. Um, <laughs> right hand <laughs> roll. That's a, that's a secret handshake for the yeah. signal by signal. Yeah. Well, Okay, so uh, there's a bunch of different national committees. Let's briefly tell you about this. So the, the folks who sit in the National Council, uh, they sit at the, they have six committees set up uh, and they're divided in different categories. So for example, there's people who work on organizing the next physics congress, which we'll talk a little bit more about later. Uh, Centennial events, which was the 100th anniversary of Sigma Pi Sigma was last year and this year. We're celebrating that. So people are organizing things for that. There's governance, which takes care of things like uh, documents, fundamental documents for the society, putting together statements for the society. Um, there's one on specifically on inclusion, improving inclusion, um, stuff on outreach. So, for example, you can go down, you can go to the SPS National website, you can download Physics Jeopardy, free can. So, if you want to have a quick event, club event, club event super. Well, Bunch of stuff there for that. Uh, also, a set of demos as well, like simple, simple demos. Um, and then also Sigma Pi Sigma, which helps to organize that uh, for the national organization. Uh, I just want to add like, the Go governance. Ahead. We did just change our constitution and we voted on that. Um, so I know it is the Society of Physics Students and that name is not going to change. But in our constitution, we have added everywhere where it says students and lovers of physics to the physics. Students, well, hold on, hold on. Students, physics, and astronomy. So, like, what I'm saying is, we put astronomy everywhere in there. So, it's not just physics. We actually just want to promote and include all of the astronomy out there. Everybody was like, here, yeah. it's mainly astronomy, and then like this much physics. Right. Right. And so it's always been that we've encouraged right. astronomy. It was just sort of assumed that people That's who did astronomy were right. physics. Now it's, on the now it's, it's sort on of explicit. The now so. It's explicit, yeah. yeah. So, but we, it's, it's always been included. Um, let's see. Okay, again, these are just some of the folks in the National Council. Of, again, here's Mike Conrad. He's the National Executive Director. Uh, Kayla, who uh, takes care of things for SPS, she's Assistant Director. Andrew, who does, he's Assistant Director for Sigma Pi Sigma. And then Michaela, uh, uh, and Lydia, and, and Sacha, uh, where they do various sundry things. Uh, for example, Lydia does a lot of stuff for Sigma Pi Sigma. Um, yeah, so there's a ton of different things here. I just want to briefly talk about some of these things. So um, uh, for different kinds of programs. So we've talked already about the awards a lot. Um, there's a bunch of outreach resources. So they have these things. They'll actually send up these kits every year if you request one. They're good for little local demos. Uh, like if you want to go to stuff with school kids, they, they call them science. Science Outreach Catalyst Kits, socks. Um, and uh, there's also a demo page available. There's a whole bunch of uh, career professional development and grad school resources available. If you do search on things like SPS Jobs or Careers Toolbox, the grad school yeah. shopper, if you're applying to graduate school, it will uh, it'll bring up a bunch of different programs and you can compare programs. So I highly recommend, highly recommend that. It doesn't have every program, but it's a lot. Um, there's also a ton of other uh, resources here for uh, interacting uh, with. Uh, about finding out about the member societies. Uh, there's a summer internship program. You can actually go work in the Capitol Hill area mostly. So you can, they've got people who work on Capitol Hill, 
work at NIST. Um, there's people who work uh, at, at Physics Today. If you want to like do a little bit of science journalism, you actually yeah. get to write an article. Right. And so, it's not limited to physics students. Nope. Like, right? um, there's this guy, I think he's a computer science student, and he works on some three D rendering of some of the database systems that are in the bottom of the scenes of like SPS's function. Um, so it's super So are they like, are they just undergrad internships? Undergrad internships, yep. They're just undergrads, they're not postgrads. Like nope, just undergrads. Uh, I know, <laughs> y'all get on in this week. I know, um, I'm too late, it's fine. <laughs> but tell, tell people we know. Um, they have, uh, another thing I'll point out is the alumni engagement program. So mm -hmm. if you're looking for someone to do, say, a, a guest speaker, right, you can go online. They have a whole list of people who are willing to give talks. Some of them are willing to do. Yeah, and they'll do remote talks as well. Okay. So, yeah, we had somebody do one from uh, University of Maryland, remoted in to to our our, our meeting. So. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then of course there's various publications here. I talked about the SPS Observer. Uh, there's also something called the Journal of Undergraduate Reports in Physics. So, for example, if you do some research, but maybe it's not enough to send into a full-on. Uh, Professional journal, you still want to get it published. Um, there, uh, you can send it out, send it to that. And it, it publishes once a year, and uh, you can get it. It's actually it's a real journal. They actually peer review those through sort of peer review process. So, uh, in fact, I had some copies right here. But um, uh, yeah, so there's that. And there's a bunch of other social media things. They have uh, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, all this stuff. So you can do that stuff. Uh, uh, just a, a lot of the, uh, there was just a, a due date passed for some of the major uh, awards, but there's some that are kind of ongoing rolling awards that you can apply for at any time. Uh, for for example, right now they've got one here going on for physics, physics, food for hungry physics and astronomy students. So if you're having people with food insecurity on your campus, they'll give you a grant for three hundred dollars to get started with that. You can build up a little maybe food pantry. Uh, that's they're trying to give that away as soon as possible. So if that, that's of interest, go ahead and apply for that right away. Also, uh, they still have money I think available in this uh, AIP SPS Undergraduate Education Pandemic Assistance Program. So. Um, it's so basically a thousand dollar scholarship, and they they want to give the money away as soon as possible. Yeah, they got so, like hundred grand. <laughs> they're having problems getting rid of it. Wow. So uh, join SPS and then apply. <laughs> okay, that's how that works. Yeah. So um, yeah. So Sean, make sure you tell your students um, to apply for that if they're having yet. Um, and uh, so yeah, that's still ongoing. Let's see. Also, all other rolling opportunities. So they have travel awards. So, for example, if you want to go to a conference and you need some extra money to pay for travel or combinations, um, they can, you can apply for uh, or up to three hundred dollars for in-person conferences, and I think up to seventy-five dollars for virtual conferences. So um, that's that. Also, if you want to go to a meeting, but maybe you don't have anything to present, maybe a poster or a presentation, you still want to go to the meeting just because you want to see what it's like. Maybe you want to go to the March meeting. The April meeting for APS. Um, you can get what are called reporter awards. And basically, what you can do is you go there, they assign you to cover various sort of events, and then you have to write up an article, which will then later be published in, say, SPS News or other venues. Right. And um, you can get an award for that as well. So that's a great way to, if you want to go to a professional conference but don't have necessarily the ability to present something quite yet. So again, those are ongoing all year round. So we talked about some of this stuff already. Uh, so I'll skip over this. Um, here's just an example of one of these science outreach catalyst kits. So um, this last year, the one was, was focused on acoustics, and they had some. Uh, they, they sent a bunch of stuff. For example, a little portable oscilloscope. There's a little microphone um, that went into that particular kit, plus a bunch of other stuff. So um, just give an example of that. Um, again, the SF, SPS Observer magazine that comes out. There's a bunch of copies of that on the table. Um, and that's got a bunch of things in there about like recent events, uh, reports from other chapters. So you might get some ideas about what other chapters are doing. Um, that's all in there. Uh, alumni spotlights, zone updates, all that kind of stuff. And 
there's examples of that over that. Um, yeah, I talked about the alumni engagement program already. Um, and then I want to point out with the alumni engagement program, it's not just guest speakers. Maybe you just want to want to say, well, I, maybe I'd like to work at a national lab. What's, what's that like? We can reach out to these people and ask them. Some of the people work at national labs and say, well, you know, maybe, maybe I will you at least talk to me, right? And tell me what it's like to work there. Or maybe someone who works in an observatory and want to find out what it's like to be at an observatory. Um, you can try to reach out to the database here. Okay, we talked about Drupal already, so I'm going to move on to that. Um, here's the SPS job site, career toolbox, uh, grad school shopper, all those things. All right, I want to talk just briefly about Sigma Pi Sigma, which is Physics Honor Society. So basically, um, the purpose of the Sigma Pi Sigma is to sort of celebrate uh, these four things, uh, scholarship, interest in physics, service, and fellowship, okay? So uh, it originally started as a fraternity and eventually became an honor society. Uh, it's been around again uh, over 100 years now, I'm gonna update this slide. Um, and essentially it becomes a, it's kind of a networking organization eventually. So you, there's, I think, uh, tens of thousands of people now who've joined over the last 100 years. Um, and um, so, uh, we try to get people inducted every year. So usually every every local chapter has its own standards. Uh, there's some national standards as well. You have to qualify for it. Um, and uh, yeah, so basically, yeah, from undergrad, it's mainly based on your GPA of service. That's the typical requirements. So for example, at Kettering, you have to have taken at least, I think, five physics courses, and you have to have a certain GPA in those courses, plus a certain GPA overall. And, and so forth. Uh, anyway, so I'll send this out to you. There's a bunch of links if you want to do an induction ceremony. Um, there's lots of help to do that as well. Um, do you want to talk about Physics Congress? Has anybody ever heard of the Physics Congress? Briefly. Briefly? Okay. It's really cool. So uh, they're having, this was originally scheduled for 2021, which was the 100th anniversary for uh, the Sigma Pi Sigma. But of course, everything got canceled because of COVID. So they postponed it for a year, and it's now going to be this coming October. It's going to be in Washington, D.C. at the Omni Shore Hotel. This is the actual lobby of the hotel. So it's a nice hotel. Like, apparently, the beach. Is it, like, it looks like a virtual German town. Like, right? I'm, I'm not exactly sure where it's located, but um, it's uh, apparently close to a metro line, and uh, it's a kind of famous hotel. Mm -hmm. The Beatles were there at some point, I guess. Uh, they tell me. So the um, theme is 100 years of momentum. Um, and uh, it's basically, it's, it's the largest conference specifically for physics undergraduate students. So um, they had, I think, over 1,200 people last time. Uh, when it was in, uh, sorry, in uh, Providence, Rhode Island. Uh, typically, it goes from Thursday to Saturday. So it's kind of a, over a long weekend time period. A uh, bunch of different workshops, tours, plenaries, um, which, you know, uh, basically speakers. And they'll have a they poster and art exhibits. There's a chapter showcase, which was really cool last time. It was the first time they did that. People bring all the different chapters from all over the country, brought stuff about their chapters, and we're kind of show off and share. Um, and then they, they have some kind of, they're gonna have a closing centennial celebration. Um, these are the centennial speakers. So they're gonna have um, uh, basically a panel, which is gonna consist of Jim Gates, who is a past president of the American Physical Society and a theoretical physicist. Uh, Eric Cornell, who's a Nobel laureate uh, for uh, discovery of the Bose-Einstein condensate. Uh, John Mather, who's also a Nobel laureate uh, who, uh, for his work on uh, cosmic background radiation. And also highly involved with the James Webb Space Telescope, which you've probably heard about lately. And, and uh, Dustin Bell Burnell, who uh, co-discoverer of pulsars and uh, winner of the Breakthrough Prize. Uh, so big name people, right? Um, and then they're also going to have sort of individual speakers, uh, Sarah Hurst, who's an astrophysicist, I believe at Johns Hopkins, Rush Holt, who is a uh, past president of the American, uh, um, American uh, Association for the Advancement of Sciences, and a congressperson, past congressperson, uh, Julianne Pollard Larkin, who is a medical physicist, and then Rainey, Rainey Horton, who's a, a NASA engineer. So, uh, really, and the great thing about this is that you can actually, it's not like they just like show up on stage and then leave. Right, they're actually at the Congress. Like you can walk up and just talk to them. Okay. It's really cool. That's cool. Can I ask some questions for all the speakers? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
um, they're going to have some really nice tours as well here. They're going to go have an overnight trip to the Green Bank Observatory, I'm sure that'll be popular. Uh, tours of the National Institute of Standards Technology, uh, and um, uh, they're going to go out to, to uh, NASA Goddard. Uh, there's going to be a tour of the medical physics uh, for medical physics at the Children's Hospital. Uh, they're going to go to the, some, see some labs at, at Maryland College Park. Go to the Air and Space Museum, of course. You guys should uh, go. DC. You can go. I can go. Yeah, 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 yeah absolutely. Like, yeah. Yeah. Well, absolutely. I mean, kind of so yeah, lots of really great, great stuff. Um, yeah, they, they want alumni actually because it's a kind of a big event. So the uh, 100th okay. anniversary event. Uh, they also have a bunch of workshops specifically designed for uh, students. So here's just a quick example of some of these things. Um, uh, I think I, I went to the Entrepreneurship for Physics for Human one last time. Um, they've got panel discussions. They're apparently doing a wikithon this time to write pages for uh, underrepresented groups, I think, in physics. Um, stuff about graduate schools, a ton of different things. Uh, I'm just going to be very excited. No, absolutely. <laughs> I'm going to be too. Yeah. So uh, there is a cost, of course. Um, uh, it costs $200 to register, and then uh, there'll be some additional cost, of course, for the hotel rooms. But um, yeah, that, that does include coffee breaks, uh, lunches. There's one formal dinner. Um, there's a slight extra charge for some of the tours. It's usually like fifteen dollars. Um, so uh, if you're interested and you want to figure out kind of an estimate how much it might cost, there's a fundraising tool online which you can go to and make, you just download the spreadsheet, type in the numbers. That's awesome. That's um, cool. And uh, and you can also apply for some awards, some of these travel awards and stuff. They, they will also help. Is the registration does that include like lodging? That doesn't include the lodging, no, the, the hotel room, but you can share the hotel room. Uh, it's $300 a night, but you can put four people in the hotel room. So well, it's pretty affordable uh, for that nice room. Um, anyway, they're having, if you want to have, if you have questions about this, this is a new thing. Brad Conrad, the executive director, he's having these now every Wednesday at 3 p.m. from now until the end of the Congress. So you can go check in, uh, go to this Zoom address, which I'll send out in the slides, and you can ask him whatever questions you want. He'll talk about his comments. So um, check that out. Um, it's a sliding scale. I think the price goes up a little bit as you get closer, but it's, it's not until September, I think, is there, there's still early bird. It's in October. Yeah. There's still time. There's still plenty of time. There's still plenty of time. If you go to the website, it's kind of less. Um, they're doing, uh, they're trying to do a fund fundraiser um, to uh, help raise funds for this. So uh, basically they're encouraging people to do kind of a run or a walk or a bike ride or whatever you want um, and get people to pledge money. And they're gonna, for every $400 that is raised uh, for a particular school, they're gonna offer a free hotel room for one night. Uh, and then $200, the other basically half of that $200 will go to an endowment to support student travel and perpetuity. So it's kind of a win-win for both the national innovation and for your town. So um, that's going going until April 14th, at least. So you can check that out. Um, so yeah, so at this point, I just want to mention again, we do have nearly 100 chapters in the zone. So, um, but not you know, less than 30 to file chapter reports. So um, if, you, if you don't haven't filed one lately, please file one. Um, and um, if you know of anybody else who hasn't filed one or just may not be very active in the area, then let us know about that as well. We're always looking for new ideas to talk. Okay, that's the best. You might have to like, so talk to uh, like departments, sure. different schools. Yes. We're going to do that. Like, yeah. That's, that's how I like to say, you know, a lot sure. of times I have teachers because email is not, I get it. I don't know if I can help like emails you know, like 30 emails back. Right. Yeah. So I feel like that might be the best option maybe yep. to just call them like, hey, sure. you guys have an SDS chapter? And like, well, that's cool because like, right. we, don't, right. we don't know that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, you should. Sure. Sure. <laughs> so uh, that's all my end of sort of the formal presentation. So if you have any other questions or concerns, um, you know, if you want to talk about problems you faced or uh, other ideas about, um, Things like we do to help improve, improve uh, attendance, or you know, do you need anything? You know, what would be helpful for for you to get uh, or to have? 
uh, we can take that back to the National Council because they do typically have some funds available to provide those things. We just need to know. So that's it. I'm going to stop talking. <laughs>